Yes, absolutely. So um, I have actually some really great news about animals on the verge of extinction. And a new study uh, that came out in zoo biology this week suggests a new idea to bring animals from the brink of extinction. In particular, they were looking at northern white rhinoceroses. And there's only three of those left on the whole planet. And this new study looked theoretically at using these three live animals, stored tissue samples, cell lines, and sperm from these and already deceased rhinoceroses, then taking that, developing stem cell technologies, collecting, generating eggs, sperm, using in vitro embryo production, embryo transfer into surrogate mothers, pregnancy maintenance, and rearing of offspring, they think they could actually establish a viable, self-sustaining northern white rhinoceros population. Wow. This is... That would be amazing. Huge, you guys. Considering other rhinos have completely died out. Right, but this is also related to that, and that's why in the show notes I said something about a seed vault, seed vault because mm -hmm. I always talk about this, storing genetic material of species on their way to extinction or extinct, we could, given the right techniques, bring an animal back from extinction if you have a similar animal to use as a surrogate, if you have enough samples. The, right. the, the thing here is... Right, if you have enough samples and something similar right. enough, absolutely. Right. So there's. I see two things here. I see one... Remembering the importance of storing these things, getting ourselves a, quote, seed vault, haha, <laughs> and <laughs> keeping this valuable genetic information, that's one. Two, keeping populations going in zoos and wildlife parks and sanctuaries, because even if there's not space for them to go out in the wild, if there's a chance for them to go out later, and we only have a few left, we're going to be kicking ourselves, right? But then on top of that, the potential of maybe tweaking some genomes. This is something I took a little extra step here, mm -hmm. thinking about all of our talk of CRISPR and things like this. If we could just eliminate bad things that are recessive, that show up with inbreeding in a species, if we know that, that can also help diversify and keep healthy a population. There are animals that have had a complete bottleneck genetically, right. like the elephant seal. Luckily, they didn't have any enormously terrible recessive genes pop up in repopulation. Right. If so you can if somewhat you genetically, you can genetically minimize the effects of a population bottleneck. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah, so this is fantastic that people are actually starting to run statistical tests and models to try to figure out if this is actually possible. We have opportunities to use it because, honestly, what do we have to lose? If we have three northern white rhinos, the likelihood of them coming out of that without some intervention is zero from three individuals because in, this, in the F2 generation, in the second generation, it's going to be direct inbreeding. That's the yeah. only way. Okay. So... Sorry. No, it's fine. Um, so there, we literally have nothing to lose, and we can actually experiment on this and see if we can make it happen. So I totally agree with you. I would totally do this. I'm all for this. I do have to challenge you on the thing that you knew I was going to challenge you on at the beginning of this, which is if we are bringing back something that has been uh, outcompeted even if it's just by humans, does it have an, a proper environment to go back to? Isn't this Great like question. my desire to reintroduce mm. the woolly mammoth? Nope, completely and, different, but it is a or, good or question. Nonetheless, or, it is a good question nonetheless because there are a lot of animals that are on the brink of extinction that also have no space due to mm. political, socioeconomic, climate issues, all sorts of things that might make their habitat missing. My understanding is that the northern white rhino does have space it could go in. And the, and the rhinos, the big thing with the rhinos, is that they are not going away due to habitat destruction because of war-torn areas. They are going away because of rhino hunting, poaching for the horns. That's it. That's the reason. 
So they're a perfect poster child to try this with because they have a place to go. They have a niche to feel. F fill. If people can stop killing them, <laughs> then they have a perfect place to be. So luckily we are in this day and age making great strides in that as well. So if we can grow the population in zoos and sanctuaries until it is a safe place for them to be out in the wild, that's a win-win. Yeah. Um, what's up next? Uh, did you have a story about dogs, Blair? Yeah. So how do you guys feel, hypothetically, if you had a dog, about a computer training your dog? So so this actually, I mean, when you say a computer, uh, I mean, if I could get my dog to watch television, I think that would be Aha. Uh -huh. So... Uh, but it, it, they never seem to care. I mean, that's always, always, that's actually something that's always interested me, is that the the TV, uh, my dogs. I don't know. There's no heard TV those, in this in this computer. I know, but I've heard dogs. <laughs> but if I had like like the the vacuum clean robot that could take my dog out for a walk and teach it some tricks, all for oh, it. Oh, Roomba. Have any problem. Yeah. <laughs> if Roomba. If Roomba could take the dog for a walk, not just go around the house, but like right. take it up and down the block and bring it back, no problem. That'd yeah. be awesome. So the big issue with training animals is that the the best way and the most effective way to train them is to identify the behavior you want, catch it the second it happens, make a signal and then treat it as quickly as you can after that. Okay, so that's why people use clickers. The this computer um, that from North Carolina State University was strapped onto a dog. It was motion sensor, and this was training a dog to sit. And then the other element of this computer was a dispenser that a human would hold in front of the dog. And when the dog sat, the motion sensor identified the sitting motion and sent the signal to the dispenser that dispensed the treat. So it was much, it, they thought it would be much faster, more efficient, more accurate. Turns out it was it was they had to pick. It was either going to be correct a hundred percent of the time or fastest after the behavior was exhibited. But there was a, a trade-off. So they found that with a hundred percent certainty the reinforcement was too late. If the reinforcement was given immediately there was a high rate of rewarding the wrong posture. So Mm. Doing this against a human, they found that humans were 100% accurate, but that their response time varied hugely. And the this modified computer now was 96% accurate. That is a pretty good accuracy rating. And while the average response time was the same for the computer and the trainer, there was variation in the human version. There was... in incredible consistency with the computer. Right. So, that, so as soon as the computer sees something, it's going to mm -hmm. go identify and treat, identify and treat, mm -hmm. whereas a human might see something and be like thinking about something else when they see it and go, oh, oh, the dog just did that and then give the treat right. a few seconds later or, what, or be right on it and, and give it immediately. Right, or fumble with the clicker or not be able to grab the treat yeah. in time. There's so yeah. many elements. Yeah. And so this is something that consistency is the number one key with training. Consistency, consistency. So this could be something that actually could be used extremely well to train service dogs, for example. So this is a great tool that could help people figure out how to train their own dog with assistance. I don't see this as replacing the human trainer, but being a tool that trainers use to great effect. I think it sounds pretty awesome. Well, knowing that dogs are social creatures, you would hope that this weren't implemented in a, you know, with dogs in a large kennel situation yes. where you have hundreds of dogs wearing these training devices, having their treats dispensed, you know, on on signal from oh, a little bowl in the, in the kennel cage, you know. No. You, and without human intervention or interaction of any right. kind. You know, that kind of situation, that's not going to be good for a dog, you know, knowing that dogs are so social in nature. So yeah. taking the human out of this is, right. especially what, if you're looking for help with service dogs mm -hmm. or police dogs or any kind of animals where human interaction is key, mm -hmm. 
I mean, this, you can't take the person out of it. It has to be used just as a helpful training tool. Unless you're training those dogs to... Right, it's an army of dogs. Of Ugh, I don't <laughs> like that. Instead uh, of a clone yeah, army, it's a dog army. robots sicking German dogs on people. Like, I can see this is yeah, now. Yeah. I don't like that one bit. Um, we, we can clone dogs, right? This is, where the, this is where the clone army we, starts. No, we, no I don't like any of this. Can't we? I mean, the, we're talking about robots that are going to train dogs, but we're already talking about robots that could give human companionship at some level. I'm sure we could teach a dog to, to pet and say reassuring things that dogs like to hear and make facial expressions that are even easier for a dog to read than the human uh, expression. So Ugh. we could, I could see this going really far. Um, I much prefer the idea of this pack being strapped onto the dog like in the test, but to have the dispenser in the hand of the human, the, hand, the human gives the verbal command. When the dog does it, the reward is dispensed like clockwork, right? Mm -hmm. That, I think, is really the key to this, is we could take it to some crazy sci-fi extent, but I do actually see this having real value in the very near future, at, just as the next step of the clicker. Everybody uses clicker in animal training now. Mm -hmm. Now you have the next step in the clicker. It's a motion sensor. Yeah. All right. Yep. Great. Yep. Click, click. You get a treat. Maybe we could use this with Justin. Oh. -ho. <laughs> well, but we just told him. Now it'll never work. Oh, it'll never work. Right. You Keep have to. You, you can train humans. I've done it. But you can't tell them that you're. You can't wait, tell wait, them. You, wait. Right. You've trained. I train humans. Oh. I've trained three humans. I've absolutely trained, I've straight up clicker trained a human, and they didn't know. That is hilarious. They, when they found out, they were very upset. This is, this is a story <laughs> I have to hear about in the after show. You have after to show. This will be an after show story.